All right, everyone. Everyone should know that uh, I found this research notes diary here. And uh, so, yes, I will start reading shortly. September 10th, 1895. Rain. With the monastery renovation complete, I have finally moved in with Ogden and Bessie. It's been a long road since I first procured the Amigri file. Even after referencing literature of all ages, the rendering of the text still remains a difficult task. Though it has been four years since I first laid eyes on it, never once has the enigma left the recesses of my mind. Contained in it are countless descriptions of the source of energy that is the secret to life's existence. The druid's cryptic experiment taken from ancient Celts, recorded by Alexander the Great hundreds of years before Christ. Branded a forbidden enterprise, it was kept hidden by the Vatican's cardinals in the depths of the Pope's quarters for a very long time. And now... I have my hand, or I have it in my hands. I have reached Wales, the land referred to in text. I will fulfill my wife, Elaine's resurrection at the monastery, built by St. Daniel Scotus. Of course, I am aware that my act could prove insolent in the eyes of the Lord. However, people may her, and however people may censure my actions, the love that I have for my wife will never cease. I ask of you, Lord, to turn your eyes away for a short while. November 16th, 1895. Rain. The more I learn about this monastery, the more eerie the structure appears to me. Ogden mentions that the hospice had been full of corpses at one time, a few hundred years ago. And I have become aware of an oppressing sense of mortal sin as I walk through the underground passageways. I can feel haunting spirits everywhere, but according to the Amigri file, the power of such a resent uh, of such resentful spirits are considered the driving force behind the reviving the Druid's cryptic experiment. I plan to fulfill the, uh, I plan to fill this place with all uh, the all-consuming ire of these spirits. Even though I may burn in hell for these sins, if Elaine can be brought back to life, I shall have no regrets. December fifth, nineteen er, eighteen ninety-five. Rain. I found out the cauldron hidden in the basement held the key to the secret. Even though the book had mentioned it, the well-positioned trick, the uh, trick door kept us from locating its whereabouts. The cauldron looks as if it was made of gold, but upon closer examination, the surface is so old that no one can determine how long it has been in existence. I would guess that it is a prehistoric artifact made a few thousand, or maybe even tens of thousands of years ago, and left to sit. We must quickly set up an altar and begin preparations for our ceremony. December 16th, 1895. Rain. I ordered Ogden to acquire some livestock. 320 chickens and 43 pigs were purchased through a supplier in town. I arranged for a group transportation, but the fog did not help expedite the undertaking. I expect to be busy as soon as they are delivered. The animal offerings are an integral part of the druid experiment. The cauldron must be filled with the freshest blood and flesh. This is where it begins. February 24th, 1896. Rain. The third experiment. Still no response. Even though I follow the directions and offer the proper prayers, there are no signs of the spirit gaining any strength. I must return to, uh, to the book and reread some parts, since I can no, uh, not proceed if there has been some misunderstanding of the text. Is there a problem with the way I conducted the experiment or the offerings, or, or are the offerings insufficient? Regardless, I need to think this is over. 
or I need to think this over. Even though I may arrive at a, at a terrifying realization, it is too late to fear anything now. I have come too far to be impeded by fear. I'm sure Ogden will understand. March 19th, 1896. Rain. Return from London. The specifically, uh, the specially ordered carriage seems to be working well. I have ta uh, taped three women in the baskets in the back. I lured some victims out of an alley at the east, and I had them sniff some chemicals and pulled them into the carriage, but, since I was not used to my new role as abductor, it took more time than I had planned. I could not have done this without Ogden's help. I am deeply grateful to him. March 25th, 1896 Rain I am still at a loss cannot make up my mind. Even if I can bring Elaine back to life, are my actions forgivable? I balk when presented with this dilemma. Bessie has taken care of the women I've kidnapped. It's better than uh, them freezing in the co some core of uh, corner of London. I hope this small gesture of kindness will be considered uh, as a, uh, uh, as an uh, as an a priori act of repentance. I wonder if my small kindness will have any significance when held up as one of the horrendous acts I am about to commit. March 31st, 1896. Rain. I must make up my mind. I must. April 3rd, 1896. Storm. Dear Lord, I have without a doubt committed a crime no human should ever have committed. I conducted the druid experiment using the flesh and blood of my victims. I sensed the incredible energy of the spirits accumulate into when I poured the women's remains into the cauldron. As I had thought before, it is human flesh that needs to be offered to fully release the effects of the procedure. What a frightening, arcane process this is. The sounds of fury in the woman's death screams have not left my ears. But I must go on. There is no turning back now. April 12th, 1896. Rain. Once again, I perform procedures. I once again round up victims, uh, four victims from London. Even though they are all old with barely the thing to live for, when I contemplate taking their lives, it leaves my stomach sick. It may be due to my doubts the spirits did not rise up to such a powerful strength before. I may have to use a younger, more vibrant source of energy. The book says fill the cauldron with the energy of the haunted spirits. I wonder how many victims the cauldron must swallow to be satisfied. June 5th, 1896. Rain. I do not have enough victims. The saintly presence of Daniel Scotus inhibits us from proclaiming er, from claiming authoritative power. I have concluded that it, uh, it might be necessary for us to offer many more lives before we are finished here. Since I have found 35 more victims for seven separate experiments, but the spirits have not responded with much strength. For me to accomplish the resurrection, I am in dire need of the accumulated strength of the spirits. I must come up with a way. I must come up with a more, uh, more efficient way to procure my victims. June 15, 1896. Rain. I have finally received the first shipment of my victims. Ogden was right when he suggested that we should offer the Lord, some, uh, Lord of the Slave Trade an enormous amount of money for this matter. He has no compassion for human life. The victims are not given much information and they arrive at the monastery expe uh, expecting a routine night's work. It's not necessary for us to go hunting for prey in town. With a few sugar-coated lies, there are plenty of people that climb right into the carriage. There's no one that will dare speak of what is to become of them. September 9th, 1896. Rain. I poured the remains into the cauldron. 
The energy levels in the cauldron have clearly increased, which makes me happy. Since it provides, uh, since it proves that I'm heading in the right direction. It seems that lately I've become more efficient at performing the tasks required of the procedures. However, Ogden and I cannot expect to become much more productive, as it is impossible for us to hire help since we must keep this matter purely clandestine. I have decided to place an order for a laboratory table from an experiment manufacturer in Manchester. It must or it will take about a month to make one uh, to make once we receive this, but we will manage to be, uh, we will be able to manage many more experiments. October third, eighteen ninety six. Rain. Butchered three bodies since morning. After lunch, we made the remains into bell. Uh, we made the repa- uh, repairs to the bell tower of the main church. After dinner with Bessie and Ogden, I butchered three more bodies. The lab table has proven its worth. All the uh, the spirits have clearly increased in strength. At this rate, I may finish preparing for Elaine's resurrection for All Saints Day. October 14th, 1896. Rain. Six bodies butchered in the morning, five in the afternoon, one after dinner. November 1st, 1896. Rain. I have waited for this day. The day I conduct Elaine's resurrection ceremony has finally arrived. The cauldron is brimming with the remains of my victims. The monastery is now consumed by the energies of the preternatural spirits. Even a saint could not hold his ground against the powerful energy of those hexed spirits. I took Elaine's body which had been preserved by urine chemicals for this very day, and I placed it on the altar. Then I began the reciting the ceremonial chant. Elaine, you are still beautiful as ever. I love you so much. Please forgive me for calling you back from the land of the dead. November 7th, 1896. Rain, what is going on? I have lost all hope. All my efforts and dreams have only been an illusion. The tree of life that grew upwards out of the corpse, as if wrapping Lane's body, was certainly the manifestation of the druid's cryptic experiments that I had been seeking. If God is capable of creating beings out of nothingness, then this is indeed a man-made example of his work. But to my horror, the image of my resurrected wife displayed on a flower petal looked just as she did before, yet it lacked a human soul. Indeed, it was a monster. Dear God, is this the punishment you have chosen for me? What I have I accomplished by victimizing nearly 200 innocent people? My only hope is in life, in believing, or lay in believing that the resurrection was possible and then dreaming of the day when my wife Elaine would join me here in life on earth once again. Now I have nothing but a cauldron full of blood, hex spirits, and a soulless monster. Is this the end? This uh, that has been awaiting me? Dear Lord, have you had no mercy? I only have one path left to follow. I have lost too much. I cannot even find the words to apologize to Ogden who lent me his strength along the way. Now I only long to sleep in peace with my wife.